All right, I think we're almost on time to start. So it's our pleasure to receive Professor Ricardo Carvalho de Barros from the State University of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Uh, Dr. Barros is currently the head of the Polytechnic Institute in Nova Friburgo, Brazil. So this would be the equivalent of the dean of the campus. So this is one of the, campus of the, the campuses of the State University of Rio de Janeiro. He has served in the past as the head of the Department of Computational Modeling, where he is a professor. He was also the director of the Department for Graduate Programs for the university, which would be the dean of the graduate school uh, equivalent. His background, he has a bachelor's degree in physics, a uh, master's in nuclear engineering, both from Rio de Janeiro, uh, a master's in mathematics from the University of Michigan, a PhD in nuclear engineering from the University of Michigan, and his dissertation at the time won the ANS, the American Nuclear Society, Mark Mills Award in 1991. Um, so he is here thanks to this collaboration we have with the Brazilian Ministry of Education called the Capi Sprint Project. And I'll let him take it away. Okay, thank you. Um, I work on the Polytechnic Institute campus of the State University of Rio de Janeiro, which is located in Nova Friburgo, 170 kilometers away from downtown Rio de Janeiro. It's a city, nice city in the mountains. And I am here sponsored by the Cap Sprint uh, project, which Cap Sprint project for internationalization of the graduate programs, which are the uh, best evaluated in Brazil in all areas. Um, I am a professor at the graduate program um, in computational method modeling of the University of the State of Rio de Janeiro, which is ranked six out of seven. So we got this project here to work with Dr. Um, Vasquez on computational modeling on, on non-classical transport. Okay, back to the 90s, back to the 80s, nodal methods were well known to be very accurate for coarse mesh calculations using new joint diffusion model. This was due to the fact that the nodal transverse integrated diffusion equations are solved analytically in all spatial coordinate directions using a simple approximation for the transverse leakage terms. However, they were not as accurate for coarse mesh calculations using discrete ordinates <coughs> as problems, I mean, transport models. This was due to the fact that the SM nodal transverse integration equations were solved analytically in all spatial directions using simple approximation for both the transverse liquids and the scattering and fission sources. In the 90s, we developed the class of spectral nodal methods for SM neutral particle transport calculations that were more accurate than conventional SM nodal methods on coarse spatial grids, like they were in the future. The 
the essence for the spectral nodal methods was introduced by Ed Larson, who published this paper in 1986. Uh, that was in the journal called Transport Theory in Statistical Physics. This paper presented a spectral analysis of the one split slab geometry set equations within a homogenized region gamma sub J to obtain their local general solution. So, in gamma sub J, the SN equations with isotropic sketching appears at this. Now we seek for general solution of this form, and by substituting these n sets into the SN equation, we obtain an eigenvalue problem. For a scattering ratio, C sub J less than one, the n eigenvalues are real numbers and appear in plus or minus pairs due to the symmetry of the angular quadratures. Therefore, the local general solution can be written as a linear combination of n exponential functions. The extended diamond by Ed Larson. Now, by integrating the SN equation, within a discretization node gamma sub j, we obtain the conventional discretized spatial balance equations. And he proposed the extended diamond uh, auxiliary equation, which is like this, where gamma sub j is a parameter that should be determined so as to preserve the local general solution of the S2 equations in the region gamma sub j. Therefore, by using the boundary conditions and the continuity conditions, the extended diamond method generates numerical solutions for S2 problems, which are completely free from spatial truncation yards. These numerical solutions are generated iteratively using the conventional S source iteration scheme by sweeping from left to right for mu greater than zero and from right to left, from mu less than zero until a prescribed stopping criteria is satisfied. However, for SN problems with n different from two, the extended diamond does not generate exact numerical solutions. the spectral Green's function of the I arrived at the U of M, University of Michigan, in 1986 for my PhD. Ed Larson and myself developed the spectral Green's function here, nodal method. The spectral Green's function nodal method uses the standard discretized the spatial balance SN equations and these non-standard auxiliary equations. The SGF auxiliary equations have parameters theta which are calculated to preserve the N linearly independent like functions of the local general solution for any value of n. The, these data can be viewed 
as the value of the node average angular flux interaction mu m direction mu m due to a unit node edge incident flux in direction mu sub m because because the node average angular flux depend only on the incoming on the incoming node edge angular fluxes. Therefore, by using the boundary conditions and the continuity conditions, the SGF method generates numerical solutions for SN problems which are completely free from spatial truncation. Now for any value of n, including S2 force. These numerical solutions, differently from the extended diamond method, since, as you can see here, the auxiliary equation decoupled the directions, so the angular flux, the average angular flux, the node average angular flux in direction M only depend on the on the edge flux and node edge flux in the same direction M. Whereas this does not happen with the SGF auxiliary equations. Therefore, we cannot use this method is not amenable to source situation scheme. So this numerical solution are generated iteratively using the partial one node block inversion, the NBI scheme, by sweeping from left to right right to left until a prescribed uh, convergence criterion is satisfied. So we use the most recent estimates for the node, for the incoming node edge angular fluxes to evaluate oops, do lado não é do meio. To ever thank you. To evaluate the outgoing fluxes. And then with this, we also use the as this estimate to evaluate those, and then those to evaluate this. Then we sweep from right to left. So we keep doing this back and forth until the prescribed uh, stopping criterion is satisfied. Now, um, this method worked fine, and it is free from spatial truncation. You know, um, for deep penetration problem, for non-multiplying me. How it didn't work well. Sometimes converged, sometimes didn't converge. For nuclear reactor global calculations. So, for discretization nodes, gamma sub j in multiplier regions, fission regions, the S and equations appear as this. It's the same, just added the fission source to where k effective, k effective is defined as the effective multiplication factor, which is the dominant eigenvalue of this problem. Since in conventional criticality calculation there exists no prescribed fixed source, nor prescribed incident particles on the 
boundaries of the reactive core. The SGF auxiliary equations are not amenable, as I said, to this kind of problems. Therefore, we define the spectral time auxiliary equation, which relay the node average angular fluxes in direction mu sub n to the node edge fluxes in all angular directions, as opposed to the SGF auxiliary equations, which relate node average angular flux to the incoming node, to the node edge, to the incoming node edge angular flux. And this kind of auxiliary equation relates to all of them. As it stands for SN eigenvalue problems, we use the hybrid SD-STF method composed of D. SGF auxiliary equations for the non-multiplying regions and the SD equation, the SD auxiliary equations for the fuel regions. For each estimate, of K effective in the outer iterations, we need to solve a negative value problem for each fuel zone, where we have defined this CJ of K, depending on K, as the multiplication ratio, which is greater than unit, leading to one pair of purely imaginary I can With this, we need to calculate the parameters lambda in the auxiliary equations for each fuel region at each estimate of K effective in the outer iterations. The numerical solution generated by the hybrid SDSGF nodal method is completely free from spatial truncation error for eigenvalue problems. The numerical values generated by the SDSGF method for K effect and for the flux profile given the power coincide with the analytical solution of the SN equations apart from finite arithmetic considerations obviously. I'll be the boundary condition. An interesting um, application of the SGF method is the albedo boundary. for transport calculations. As neutron fission events do not take place in the non-multiplying regions of the reactors, we can improve the computational efficiency of nuclear reactor global calculations by eliminating explicit numerical calculations within the non-multiplier regions around the active domain. For example, here, this B stands for Bethel and modulator. And these are few regions. So by using the SGF auxiliary equations and the SN discretized balance equations, we are able to exactly subsume one day exactly substitute this BM, Bethel Moderator, for example, system by an albedo matrix. This way, we sweep only in the few regions and use the albedo matrix to apply a special uh, reflective boundary conditions. 
sweeping deck and Now, this is good for uh, one day. Everything is, uh, I mean, generate, like uh, these methods generate um, numerical solutions for deep penetration problems and for uh, criticality problems without trun spatial truncation error. What about multidimensional uh, SN calculus? Now, we first integrate the xy, for example, two-dimensional xy geometry as an equation separately along the x and y coordinate direction within each discretization node, gamma sub ij of width h sub xi and height h sub yj. Now, the result are the SN transverse integrated nodal equations. And we need to approximate these conventional nodal methods in back to the 80s approximated both the source term, including scattering source and fission terms and the transverse leakage terms. And then solve the resulting equations analytically. What we did with Dr. Edward Larson was we only, like in the fusion, we only approximated the transverse leakage terms and treated the scattering and fission source analytically by the spectral analysis of these equations, these transverse integrated nodal equations. So to derive the SGF and the hybrid S DSGF constant nodal method, we approximate the transverse leakage terms by constant. That's what we did. Thus obtaining the one-dimensional transverse integrated as in the constant nodal equations. So we approximate these terms by constant. Later on, we developed different methods using um, other types of approximations. But initially, we approximated by constants. These are the only approximations, as I said, we consider in the SGFCN and the SDSGFCN methods. In contrast to conventional, as I said, SN Similarly to this lab geometry SN problems, we apply the SGFCN method for deep penetration SN problems and the SDSGFCN method for nuclear reactor global calculations in multidimensional rectangular geometry. Our research team um, in Brazil has applied more accurate approximations for the transverse leakage terms um, to SM calculations in non-multiplying media. For example, we consider the exponential approximations, which led to the SGF XP and method wherein the decay constants in a space is assumed to be the macroscopic absorption cross-section of the material zone particles leave behind. Now, 
the words. Um, so you have zone one here, different from zone two. Therefore, on, on this edge, I, I want to approximate these flux by exponential. So this one, going from C1 to 3, 2, I use as a decay constant the absorption um, cross-section from this one. For this, I use the, as an approximation, the absorption cross-section from this zone, because the, these particles come from this zone. This is one, this is two. That's the idea. We have also considered Linear approximation, linear approximation for the transverse linkage terms only again because the source terms are treated analytically. Linear approximation, um, the way we did, we need um, also besides the zero order spatial moment of the transverse integrated equations, we also need the first spatial moments. We have also developed other spectral nodal methods applied to SN and diffusion calculation. Response matrix method which is much simpler than the SGF class of a nodal method. Some improvement because using response matrix, you don't need to use the the discretized balance equation, and we don't need to use um, the auxiliary equations. Therefore. You don't spend computer time to solve for those failures. It's much simpler in this aspect. Also, the spectral deterministic method. Uh, the response matrix methods, this one, are simpler to implement, as I said, in a computer code and extend to energy multigroups very easy, straightforward, no problem, through 3D calculations. As they do not make use um, of conventional discrete spatial balance equations and auxiliary equations with, with those parameters data. However, they involve matrix algebra including matrix inversions, which can lead to poorly conditioned calculations. The spectral deterministic methods, SDM, are even simpler to implement in a computer code and extend to energy multigroup and 3D calculations, as they simply iterate on the constant of the local general solution. We have also implemented these spectral nodal methods to energy multigroup models and to adjoint SN calculations in source detector direct and inverse problems. So to iterate on the constants, so we use the most recent estimates, or boundary conditions, but the most recent estimate for these incoming angular fluxes to evaluate the constants. With these, we determine 
the redness. Then we use these to estimate the cost. With these, we evaluate the redness. And then you keep going back and forth until I prescribe uh, stopping criteria is uh, achieved for the constants or for the scale of flux or node edge scale of fluxes or <coughs> fluxes or everyone. Some references, well, the SGF uh, method for 1D non-multiplying regions. We published that. I was at the University of Michigan uh, at Nuclear Science and Engineering. Then this one, I was already back to Brazil. The SDSGF for 1D critical calculation was published in this journal. The albeit boundary conditions was published in 2007 in Progress in Nuclear Energy. And then the SGFCN for two-dimensional um, non-multiplying media calculations. I was I was not in each, but there was but that was the essence of my PhD dissertation. And for this work I got the Mark Mills Award from the American Nuclear Society. Now, um, the STSGF constant node for 2D critical calculation was published in this journal in 2002. The exponential in 2002, also the linear in 2007. Response matrix uh, for 1D in 2013. In 2D is to appear in progress in nuclear engineering very soon. And now the SDM for 1D in 2018. General concluding remarks. Well, according to the references, the spectral nodal methods are more efficient than conventional nodal methods for coarse mesh SN transport calculations. They generate more accurate results on coarse, on coarse spatial grids with less computational running time. A negative feature of spectral model methods with the NBI iterative scheme is that they iterate on the node edge angular fluxes as opposed to the SI scheme. And you um, may have too much storage depending on the However, as the spectral nodal methods are more accurate, we expect to use fewer discretization nodes. So you can control the amount of storage we have. Well, of his future work, our collaboration with Professor Vasquez, sponsored by CapSprint, project is intended to apply these numerical methods to non-classical neutral transport problems. And um, this is, uh, you can photograph to go to the website for non-classical transport, for the non-classical transport. And thank you. <laughs> That's all I did.